In question number 9, we're asked to find the area of the region bounded by the graph of y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 2, the x-axis and the vertical lines x equals 0 and x equals 2 as shown in the figure. Well, we know that to find the area under a curve, we're going to need to set up a definite integral. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Now, the function that we're working with is this function that they're calling y and it's going to be 2x squared minus 3x plus 2. Because this is a multi-termed expression, I'm going to offset the whole thing with parentheses. It's important that you do that. The variable that we're using is x, so I'm going to follow this with a dx. And our lower limit of integration is going to be 0, because the whole thing starts at 0, and then it ends at 2. Now, we're going to be able to evaluate this definite integral by finding the antiderivative and then substituting in accordingly using the first fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's go ahead and find that antiderivative. I start with a 2, I leave some space, I raise the power from a 2 to a 3, and then multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 1 third. I repeat the process for the middle term. I'll start with negative 3, I'll leave space. I'll raise the power from 1 to 2 and multiply by the reciprocal, this time which will be 1 half and then I'll, it will end with 2x. I'll clean this up, and this gives us 2 thirds x cubed minus 3 halves x squared plus 2x. Again, because it's a multi-termed expression, I'll offset this with parentheses, and I'll introduce my new notation, this little bar here, starting with 0 at the bottom and 2 on the top. Now, I always enjoy these types of problems when there's a zero because I know that when I plug it in that whole thing is just going to go away. But we'll deal with that in a moment. The first thing that I need to do is plug in the top number which is 2. And If I plug in the top number I'm going to get 2 thirds times 8 minus 3 halves times 4 and then 2 times 2 is going to be plus 4. So this is going to be the result when I plug in 2. Now when I plug in 0 everything is going to go away. So that's always a happy time. It's just going to make my calculation a lot easier. So now I'm left with 16 thirds. Uh, let's see what I have now. Minus 6 plus 4. I can simplify this to 16 thirds minus 2. And I can simplify that further to 16 thirds minus 6 thirds. And I end up with 10 thirds. So the area under this function, y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 2, bounded by x equals 0 and x equals 2, is going to be 10 thirds. In number 11, we're asked to determine the area of the indicated region. And this indicated region is defined by the function y equals x plus sine x. Now, I provided the graph for you, and it looks to me like this region is bounded on the left at x equals 0 and on the right at x equals pi and this is the function y equals x plus sine x. So what this is really asking us to do is find the area under this curve. So this is going to require setting up a definite integral. Now my lower limit of integration is going to be 0 and my upper limit is going to be pi and my function is x plus sine x. Don't forget to follow that with a dx. So now I'm going to find the antiderivative of this function which is going to be x and I'll raise the power from a 1 to a 2 and multiply by the reciprocal and I'll think about the antiderivative of sine which is actually negative cosine. Now this is a multi-termed expression so I'm going to partition the whole thing off with grouping symbols and I'll introduce this new notation, the bar, and the bottom value will be 0 and the top value will be pi. So let's start by plugging in the top number pi. This is going to give me 1 half pi squared minus cosine pi. Now I'll plug in 0. When I plug in 0 I get 1 half 0 squared minus the cosine of 0. Cleaning this up a little bit more, we've got pi squared over 2. Now the cosine of pi is negative 1, but it's minus that, so it's really going to be plus 1. This just goes away completely. The cosine of 0 is 1, so this becomes minus 1, but it's the opposite of minus 1, so it's really plus 1. 
So what we really have here is pi over 2 plus 2. And if we wanted to write this as a single fraction, we can make our common denominator 2 and say pi plus 4 over 2. So this expression here represents the area under this curve. And we figure that out by setting up a definite integral and applying the first fundamental theorem of calculus.